How you doing today? I hope you're doing awesome. It's your friend Phil here. The trainer and coach in all things PMP, KPM, PMBOK. Project management and more. I hope your weekend has been awesome and I hope you've been studying like you should. To get this monkey off your back. I'm talking about the PMP exam. It's like a monkey on your back, you know. So my two cents for you is for you to begin to comb through these processes and unravel those that are very close together, maybe in a process group or close together by virtue of the fact that they're in the same knowledge area. And today, the two processes we're going to be talking about are validate scope and control scope. Now, the reason why folks get these ones mixed up from time to time is because they are in the same knowledge area and they are in the same process group. And this doesn't happen very much in the PMBOK guide where you have two processes in the same knowledge area and in the same process group within monitoring and controlling, you see. We have this quite a lot in planning within scope and schedule, cost, resources, and risk especially, and those are pretty clear cut. But once you move away from planning into executing, monitoring, and controlling, it then becomes a bit of a challenge sometimes, especially for newcomers, to distinguish one process from another. So today we're talking about these two, validate scope and control scope. So in one sentence, what is control scope? I'm going to take control scope first because it's the one people typically are like, uh, uh. <laughs> so let's deal with that one first. Control scope is the process where the project manager and the team are involved in preventing any unauthorized extras from being at it to the locked down scope baseline. And when I say locked down, locked down because it goes through, theoretically speaking, some approval process. It goes through a process where management says, that's what we want and let's lock it down, that's enough. Or where the customer says, yep, that's exactly what we want and we agree that this is what we're gonna pay for. Now, remember, in the area of scope, you should be thinking about two broad paintbrush strokes, so to speak. First broad stroke is requirements. And the second broad brush stroke is the scope of work to be done. So you've got your requirements on one hand and you've got your project scope on the other hand. These two have to be agreed upon. And ultimately when you get your scope baseline, this locks down the requirements that have now been transformed into some of your WBS components and items within your project scope statement. You see, so when I talk about control scope, control scope is the process where you ensure that no one is adding any extra requirements, one, and two, any extra work. Because the work you're doing should be work to accomplish identified and agreed upon requirements. So in control scope, if anyone wants additional requirements to what has already been agreed upon, that individual needs to go through the proper channels to request those requirements. That individual should probably be writing out a change request to request anything additional. 
in the same token it is not uncommon to see people doing work that was not agreed upon or identified for any of the requirements that have been brought forth such busy work such unnecessary work needs to be weeded out hence control scope for example a team is working on implementing some IT software in a firm and one of the team members decides it would be great to run a survey to see how people are enjoying the tool during the pilot or perhaps see how they feel the new tool measures up to the old tool. Was that part of the scope of the project? Though it sounds like a good idea. No, this was not part of the identified requirement or scope to get us to the implementation of the new thing. So why are we doing it? Well, someone thought it would be a nice idea to just get this data from a survey. No, that is gold plating. That is adding extras. Now, you're not adding extras to the software, but you're adding extra to the scope of work being executed. There's no need to do that. No one asked for it. Oh, well, it doesn't cost much money. We'll just throw up a survey on, on the web. It's not part of the work. It's not part of what was required. It is known as gold plating. And gold plating should be prevented. And the people to help in preventing this are the team members to support the PM, of course, and the project manager. Now, if someone said, oh, well, I think this would be a great idea so that we know how the team has taken on this software and what their impressions of it is, maybe after the pilot or maybe when we go live, I, this would be a nice thing to add. Okay. How about a change request to do that? Now, in some firms, a change request could be a simple process of sending an email to the project manager and saying, can we do this? I think this will add value to the project. Control Scope will take that change request and process it through the performing integrated change control process. You see what I'm saying? Nothing wrong in asking for changes, but they have to be Put through the right process. Control scope will receive them and perform integrated change control is where they will begin to be processed through the right channels. Or let me say, let me put it this way. Control scope is where they are generated because it's an output. So they're not an input to control scope. They're an output. Those change requests. Get your change requests out and then they go into performing a greater change control. And that's really the main thing that happens in performing a greater change control, you see. Preventing those unauthorized changes and making sure that if there was work identified to be done, that indeed it is done or was done. Okay? The second one, you already know, this is a very straightforward one, validate scope. This is where your customer approves or rejects a deliverable that has been submitted for inspection. And that's the main tool and technique in Validate Scope. It's inspection. But remember, it's not you inspecting it. It's your customer or sponsor or the approved stakeholder or the designated, I should say, stakeholder that actually does that. Okay, so that's what happens in Validate Scope in a nutshell. Okay, I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to have a part two for this same video where I go into a little bit more detail regarding Validate Scope. But for now, that's it. Thank you very much for joining, and I'll talk to you later, Gator. Bye for now.